The language of the landscape. This is something that's older than words itself. Something that we humans are all hardwired to receive and understand in a deep and meaningful way. For a lot of us, this ability just lays dormant. It hasn't been practiced. This used to be for our survival, where to find water, how to find food, how to not be eaten. But nowadays, especially when it comes to learning about our landscapes and how to interact with them in a positive way, knowing how to read the landscape is essential. This is all of the information that you get from that landscape while you're on it. The smells, the sights, the feelings, all of this rich amount of information coming in from all of our senses that are acutely designed to receive this specific information. And so with this, we can really understand how our landscape is behaving currently, what its potential is, and how to work with it to realize that potential. I heard it once said that contours and contour maps are the language of the landscape and my heart just sank. And this was coming from someone who's an ecosystem restoration practitioner. And yet when we have these senses that are finely tuned to get all of this wealth of information from the landscape, we're gonna distill that down to just a tiny little portion of that information and then make critical decisions for that landscape off of that tiny little portion. There are so many times where what you see on the landscape isn't reflected in the contour maps. And even with the highest resolution LiDAR contour maps, there are things that exist on the landscape that aren't accounted for in the shape of that land. Now, what do I mean by that? I've been to all sorts of landscapes where you have a spring coming out of the ground at a point where you wouldn't consider to be a normal geographical feature to produce a spring. Yet you come across them time and time again, sometimes springs at the top of ridges or springs at the edges of knobs or, you know, there's so many different layers and complexity going on within the earth. Sometimes what the earth presents, especially from a water standpoint, is pretty counterintuitive with what you might think from afar. And so I'll go so far as to say, if you're making any design decisions based off of a contour map, I would question if you're really doing that in service to that landscape. Because that landscape, if you listen, it will tell you what it wants. It will tell you what's possible, what it needs, what's happening currently. And if you listen to and watch the animals, listen to the plants and what they're telling you, listen to the water and what it has to say, they're not speaking English, they're speaking in all of this communication, all of this sensory expression that we can receive and are actually finely tuned to receive. And so I think it's really important that we practice this. You can do all sorts of things to build this. One of my favorite things is just to develop a sit spot. Develop a spot that you go outside in nature on a regular basis and observe what's happening around you. Once you start to let your mind unwind, you let all your thoughts dissipate, you let your mind become like a blank slate, like a calm lake, you can then start to receive information really clearly from that landscape. And it's going to teach you all sorts of things, things that you wouldn't imagine, things that you couldn't have imagined before experiencing them firsthand. And so these are skills and abilities that we all have. They, you can't help but have them. They're hardwired into our bodies, into ourselves. But for so many, we just haven't practiced these skills. And so spend the time learning landscapes walk landscapes and learn from them, observe creatures and learn from them. The book of nature is freely open to you and to all of us who want to learn and read and understand it. Hi to all, Renzo from Italy, Tuscany. And uh, a few thoughts about water stories and about the layout of the course. Uh, 
as a student of the course and as a today consultant on water management and water cycle restoration in Italy, I've come to a point where I'm co always more convinced about the one important aspect of water cycle restoration, which is learning to read the landscape. Now, we all want to jump straight on to earthworks and this stuff, and we've seen what Zach has done, we've seen what Sepp Holzer has done, we've seen what Rajendra Singh has done. And uh, I do get it, you know, we, we start the course thinking, wow, I want to just start doing earthworks. But I would just like to focus on one aspect of the course, the first modules, the first sections. They're about reading the landscape. Now, learning to read the landscape is an ongoing skill that we will learn in time, but it is central to understand. Because before we even get to the point where we start doing earthworks, we'll see it in the first projects we do or on our land or for clients. The most important thing is to learn to understand how water moves on soil, on the landscape, on the territory, how it uh, collects in certain points and how it infiltrates. And so I really think that it's so important to walk the land, walk and not just base our knowledge on maps, on digital rendering, you know, of landscape, because I've learned so much walking the land and understanding really how slope uh, influences the way that water moves and how geology influences the way that water infiltrates into the ground, you know, and goes underground. And learning where water moves and how it moves in the soil, you know, and um, how it infiltrates, at what depth, how seasonally it changes, you know, the depth that it gets to when there's a lot of rain, how the groundwater level really lifts up. And so I really would like everyone to sort of focus on this first section of the course. Um, it is a few modules just long, and it's, I think, the 60% of importance in water cycle restoration. Because I've learned so much walking the ground as a consultant in diverse projects in Italy and you really learn immediately how to recognize the points where you will have an effective you know um, result in water cycle restoration understanding where water already goes we um, we can infiltrate water anywhere on a, on some land and that's maybe okay but we can really take it to a next level if we understand where exactly to infiltrate that water. And working with water's movement, you know, understanding really where water wants to go. So I really want to stress one aspect, learning to understand, to read territory, to read slope, to read soil and geology. The course Water Stories really taught me how important geology is, you know. We always speak about land in terms of area, square miles, square kilometers. And we often miss out on the fact that land is important even in its depth. I mean, learning the layers we have, you know, and how water infiltrates. And one thing I've learned reading the landscape is learning to understand how trees grow, shrubs grow, how plants grow. Because certain plants will indicate the presence of underground water. And uh, you can start to really just look at a piece of land and a hillside and immediately see where water is flowing underground just looking at how trees are growing what trees are growing and that's something that we will learn in time but it's something that Zach shares in the first section of the course and it is foundational I believe the other point that I think is really important in reading the landscape is learning to read the landscape historically now my farm where I am now is a piece of land that was farmed since the 15th century at least. So there is a stratification. There is a layering, a historical layering of water management. And in learning to understand why certain decisions were made and how they were made, doesn't mean that we have to necessarily, you know, replicate what was done, but we have to understand why they did certain, why they made certain decisions, you know. So I believe there is even a historical layer to all the reading of the landscape uh, skill that we have to learn and I think that is foundational for the course so really focus on the first sections because if you focus on those you concentrate on those you really exercise 
your capacity, your skill in reading the landscape, your earthworks then will be much more effective. It will be so different and you will understand, you will learn the fact that you don't necessarily have to do immediately big projects, but you can even learn the exact places where water flows. Just watch the water run off on a road, on a dirt road, on a piece, on a field, and look, look at the little signs that water leaves, okay? And you will really see the difference, you know? And you will really start to understand what is really foundational in water cycle restoration, which is reading the landscape grid. Then we'll get to the earthwork section, which is very important because we have to know what we can do. But I believe that reading the landscape is something that we really have to focus on. And uh, that's why I just wanted to, you know, sort of stress this point. I mean, you will start taking the course, but please pay attention to those first sections. Are you ready to rejuvenate landscapes, restore ecosystems, and even revive rivers? To move beyond the theory and start practicing ecosystem regeneration? To succeed, you'll need skills, support, and confidence. It's why I created the Water Stories core course, to empower you to heal landscapes and revive waterways with your own hands and heart. I've spent the past decade implementing projects all around the world. Not theoretical designs, but real results on land. I put all of the lessons I've learned from working with legends like Sepp Holzer and Rajendra Singh into this course. The Water Stories core course gives you everything you need to actualize projects on the ground and in your community. For each module, actions guide you through the experiences you'll need to become competent and then confident reading and regenerating land. From the technical aspects of earthworks and ecosystem establishment, to the personal development you'll need to be effective, to providing a business roadmap for success, this course offers a transformational experience that reshapes your relationship with water, land, and life. As hopeful as I was when we began, even I've been surprised how quickly it's delivered results for our students. No matter where you live and no matter your background, you can help heal the earth with water cycle restoration. Check the link below for upcoming courses and I'll see you in class. The book of nature is accessible to all of us. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, doesn't matter your background. This is something that we're all hardwired to receive and if you take the time and space to develop these skills, you'll be really amazed at where it leads you. One of my favorite things to tell people to do, a great way to start reading your landscape, is go outside when it rains. When it's raining really hard and you want to be inside cozy, put on a good jacket, put on a layer, whatever you need to, a nice umbrella, and go outside and listen to the language of that landscape. It will tell you right away, is it receiving that rain? Is it rejecting that rain? Where is the water flowing very fast? Where is it accumulating? All of these things are going to guide you to how you might interact and engage with this landscape. It's going to teach you where are the acupuncture points within that landscape. Where are the points where you can be really effective with your actions, where you can make a really minor change but have a really outsized positive impact. And so next time it's raining, I challenge you, take the time, go outside and see what's happening to those raindrops. See where it's going, see how that landscape's receiving it, and it's gonna already start to teach you a lot about that landscape, its present conditions, and also what's possible there. So this is a pretty new style for us. Let us know what you think down in the comments. If you hate it, let us know. If you like it, let us know. And let us know what else you'd like to hear about. What elements of being a water cycle restoration practitioner really intrigue you? Or do you have a lot of questions around? 